All right, I'm Nick. We are in the studio. We are going to talk about launching and landing the kayak in surf today. Now, this video, the videos we're going to talk about were filmed Sunday the 25th, which was a snapper season day. We had to cancel on clients because it was going to be pretty rough, and getting clients in and out of the surf sometimes isn't the funnest, uh, and it's just not worth it, right? So, we decided to go out, Skyler and I, we used the vertical jigs, we caught a bunch of fish, not the fish we wanted to catch, we explored a few spots that got hit pretty hard by Hurricane Sally, and it was fun to go look around, kind of a peaceful day. Uh, the water was real nice offshore, a little bit of northwest wind, or north wind, but nothing bad, okay? Um, so we're gonna talk about the surf. This video will probably run a little bit long, so I'm gonna take some time. We'll give you guys some pointers that I probably didn't go over well in the last video, give you guys some in detail tips about the PDL system and how to leave the latches latched or unlatched depending on what you're doing. Give you a play by play and go from there. Um, first thing you notice in the video is I do not have my life jacket on while I am launching in the surf. And honestly, I don't typically wear it while I am launching or landing the kayak. Some people will say, well, it's foolish if you hit your head. Well, hit my head, I'm not gonna be able to inflate it anyways, right? Because uh, it is an inflatable life jacket. So before the comments go off and say, you don't have your life jacket on, I know I do it for a reason. I don't want my life jacket getting caught on anything if I need to bail out of the kayak quickly because there's a big wave. Uh, my life jacket does go on, a little waist belt that I put on once I get through the surf before I come back into the surf. That being said, let's look at this first video. This is the launching portion. Before we look at the video, we are gonna talk to you about a few things. One thing, you should never launch in the surf if you're not comfortable. If you are gonna launch in the surf when you're not comfortable, don't bring all your gear. Take the kayak down there and practice. The only way you're gonna get good at going through the surf is spending time practicing. If you just think you're gonna go down there and do it the first day correctly, you might get out, but when you go to come back in, you're gonna lose all your stuff. Even people who are experienced run into problems, they flip, they lose their stuff, and you'll see why at the end of the video. So, first things first, get to the beach, walk down to the beach, look at the waves. The weatherman's not always right. If you pull into the parking lot, shut your vehicle off and you can hear the waves crashing and you hear it real quick and short, that means the waves are not spaced out and they're hitting the beach real, real fast. That should be your first indicator that it's super sloppy. Go down there and look before you push your kayak and make a smart choice whether you're gonna go or not. So the forecast for this was 1.8 to two feet at six seconds. Now you're gonna see those waves hit the beach pretty quick. It's probably close to six seconds, but six seconds is not that long when you're trying to get into a kayak. So here is a quick look. Now, let's pause the video. I'm dragging the kayak down, but I'm not just gonna get down to the water and I'm not just gonna throw the kayak in the water and go. I stood on the beach, I watched those waves for a while, kind of like surfers do, except for you're looking for the smallest possible wave and the biggest space between those waves. Typically, it'll happen after the largest wave breaks on the beach, then you wanna get in the kayak and go. Now, when you watch this video, you can see that the waves are breaking on a sandbar that's out there. Then it's kind of calm, and then it breaks on the beach. Right there where that break is, that's a sandbar. Then it comes into the beach. Now, everything in the kayak is ready to go. Pull my pants up a little bit so I don't trip anything crazy. Wait till this wave breaks. Put the kayak down, make sure she's floating, get a jump, pull the pedals down. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, you need to leave your paddle in your hand, use your paddle. Now, I did not latch that PDL system in because if you come over one of these waves and bottom out like that and the pedal system hits the ground, it's gonna cause a problem, it's gonna break something. So, the goal is to time these waves up and to either get over it before it breaks or right after it breaks like that. Now, timing is important. All is well until about right here. This one breaks early, boom, got me wet. It happens, okay? But the kayak is pointed into the waves. Now, this is a big one. Boom, she hits you hard. Lots of water in the kayak, pedals came up a little bit, no big deal, we're out of it. That one broke way out there where we want it to break. <clears throat> now you just pedal over it. The whole goal here is to stay pointed into the waves. 
There's no big deal. The PDL system has plenty of torque and you're good to go. That kayak took a ton of water. It filled up with water and the scupper holes performed perfectly. As you can see, once we're past the surf, it's pretty calm. The waves are just rollers, no big deal. Once we got offshore, it was a little windy, but nothing to it. Very simple, very easy. Take your time. I recommend you go back to that video, watch it a few times, pay attention. You have to be comfortable with your kayak. The things you can't see really, really well is I hopped in, I threw the pedal system down right where it was supposed to go because everything is already prepped and ready. I'm super familiar with the kayak. My right hand instantly drops the rudder. My left hand is instantly turning the rudder left to straighten the kayak out. Once the kayak is straight, you can pretty much eat up any wave out there. You just pedal through it. Now, they're gonna break at different places depending on how big they are. The bigger the wave, it'll break a little bit early because it's shallower and it has more power. Smaller the wave, it'll break a little bit later. You saw that in the video. I was looking down, I turned around a little bit. One of the waves broke early, then the next one broke late and it got me wet. My goal was not to get wet, okay? You can't always be perfect in your timing. I took it right to the chest, no big deal. Kayak straight, pedal, so on, no problems. Now, that's going. Going is always the easy. If, if you can't get out of the surf or through the surf, when you go to come back on the beach, you're gonna have problems. Now, when we go to come back, everything is pretty much the same. It's about four or five hours later, conditions are the, pretty much the exact same. There's people on the beach, there's some guys shark fishing, so we took our time, we figured out where we needed to be, then we came on in. Um, one of the main reasons I love the PDL for offshore is, or even inshore, is the ability to pedal in reverse instantly. Being able to go in reverse instantly makes my life easy in a ton of situations. And the first thing you're gonna see is I pedal backwards to go over a wave. When we launched, the goal was to let the wave break and then go over it because the white water rolling will go underneath you. Or pedal over the wave before it breaks. That way you don't get hit in the chest like I did. When we come back in, especially with swells coming directly from the rear of us, the goal is to let the wave go, let the wave break, and then pedal behind the wave the whole way. So when she's building, getting taller, you should be here. Then when she breaks, you keep on going. <clears throat> so you'll see we pedal backwards. And you'll have the audio, you'll hear us talking. It's a team effort, right? So the idea is to point out something that someone may, may not see. And in this case, I'm talking to Skylar, who's off to my right. And you'll see <laughs> somebody almost got away. He makes a weird, little weird, funny noise in there too but let's roll the video so you guys can see it. We can talk about it in depth. I'm going before that bitch is coming again. Yeah. Come on, bitch, break. You fucking break. Pop your latch. It's hot. You alright? Yeah. I just got to raise the the very first thing you're gonna see is me pedaling in reverse. I am pedaling in reverse because we are getting very, very close to where the waves break. We don't wanna be on that sandbar. It's the shallowest part. It's where the waves go from rolling to breaking. We wanna be on the backside of those waves and we wanna use the smallest wave to our advantage. We're not trying to surf. We're not trying to boogie board. We're not trying to break all of our gear. Obviously we have rods on board sticking straight up in the air. We have our fish finders on the kayaks, thousands and thousands of dollars of stuff. We don't want to break that stuff, right? So keep watching. We pedal backwards over and over. That way we don't go when we don't want to go. We pick the perfect opportunity. When we get going, we're not going super fast. Remember that water is still going to be pushing you to the beach. It is not a race. The faster you go, the faster you wipe out. So 
you hear the comment. After that comment, we slowly start going forward and then you kind of get dropped off right there and it's time to bail out. So if you look at the part where we get dropped off at, you hear Skylar make a noise. You can see him in this caption. He was real close, but that's how easy it is. It is very close to get turned sideways in these waves and it could happen to anyone at any given time. Make sure your PDL drive is unlatched when you're doing this. If you look, you can see me unlatch my PDL system right before that wave. That way I can just pick it up, toss it, get out of the kayak. Once you're out of the kayak, you go to the rear of the kayak so the kayak doesn't turn as easy. You'll still see the kayak turn to the left here, which is not really too big of a deal. Skylar's kind of coming out in front of me. I didn't want to drop my kayak and run into him. So I tell him to get out of the way pretty much, right? Uh, because we don't want to sit there in a surf zone where those waves could just bust us for no reason. He gets out of the way. We push our kayaks into the beach. Obviously, he's super swole. Uh, so by the time I get there, he's already, you know, ready to hulk out and pull my kayak up too, which obviously is greatly appreciated because I'm just getting lazy maybe. Uh, if you are out there and your other friends are coming like that, it is nice to help people out. It makes everyone's life easier and the water helps move the kayak. So now that we have gone over that stuff, the video is a little bit long. Hopefully you guys are still watching. There's a lot of things to learn in that video. Your PDL drive should be unlatched in the surf. Some people are gonna say, why do you do that? Well, the last thing you wanna do is come up on a wave, come down, and then that prop, or the, really the lower unit, hammer the ground. It's gonna break your mounts, and then you have no power. This way, if you hit, it'll pop up, and then you can just push it back down, and you're still in the game. Um, coming in, same way. Last thing you wanna do is be coming in, and then bottom out, boom, you're just gonna stop, and everything's gonna go forward. That's gonna be very painful, very bad for the kayak. This way of hitting thing, it pops up, Always shove it back down there, you're good to go. Nothing's broke, easy day, and you're on the beach good to go without any problems. Now, I have come to the surf an unbelievable amount of times. I have been out there in far worse conditions than that. Anytime that it is consistent and timed up like that, it is pretty easy. Even if it's big, it's easy. Now, when it's sloppy and come from every direction, you need to be comfortable in your kayak or you're gonna have problems. So, whole point of the video, watch the surf, learn the surf, understand what the surf report says, practice in the surf. More importantly, be familiar with your kayak. If you're familiar with your kayak and you know where everything is and you don't gotta look around, if you gotta look for the rudder handle, you're in trouble because your eyes should have been looking out at the water. But if you gotta look over here, or you gotta look over here, or you gotta do this and that, you're gonna have problems on days with rough surf. Keep that in mind. If you have any questions, drop a comment. YouTube tells me that I should tell you to turn on the bell notification. And if you're still watching, we're gonna give away these 20 foot Navarre Kayak Fishing Kayak straps. There's two of them that come in this cool pouch these days. It zips up, so if you ever roll them back up, you can keep them underneath the seat of your truck or wherever you want to keep them. They're nice to have. Just comment below. Let me know where you're watching the video from. Like I said, if you have any questions, comment, send me an email, nickandnavarkayakfishing.com, and hit the like button. It helps out the video, and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.